And in entertainment news tonight, Lil Nas X, the creator of Satan Shoes and the cause of much outrage and celebration, scoring a big win in the music industry today and giving a lesson on generating controversy into commercial success. The Billboard Hot 100 chart updated today lists his song at number one in its debut. Montero drew 46.9 million streams in the U.S. just last week. This is the same man behind the popular Old Town Road song, and this latest and purposely provocative video shows Lil Nas X in the Garden of Eden before he visits the devil in hell and does a few things that many in the religious community consider sacrilegious, but he is not apologizing. Mark Malkin from Variety joining us now live. Thank you, Mark, for being here. All right, so Mark, would you say, is it fair to say Lil Nas X got what he wanted? We, we are talking about this song and it, it's a hit. It is a hit. We're talking about the song. It's a great song. It's a great video. What do artists want? They want people listening to their music and looking at their videos. And that's exactly what we're doing. All right. Well, we know there's obviously a lot of backlash about the video, the concept behind the video, but Lil Nas X never backed down. Even getting into an online exchange with South Dakota's governor, she said, Christy Noem said his Satan shoes were bad for children's souls. But we know that artists have been using this tactic for decades. Madonna's just one example. She used burning crosses, a black Jesus, and her like a prayer video, Mark. Listen, this is what artists are supposed to do. They're supposed to start conversation. They're supposed to get people thinking. Lil Nas is not on a mission to, you know, um, turn people into Satan-worshipping children. Um, the governor tweeted at him, and guess what? Lil Nas wasn't having it. Lil Nas tweeted back at the governor and said, you're the governor. You should not be tweeting about Satan shoes. Well, and Mark, you know, to add to that, he also shared this reflection on why he did not care if he upset people, tweeting that he spent his teen years miserable and hating himself because people taught him that being gay was immoral and that he would go to hell. So he essentially took that concept, used that imagery in his art. And Mark, do you think this means anything more broadly for LGBTQ acceptance when a singer in a song that embraces being gay debuts at number one? I have to tell you, as a gay man myself, if I had a little Nas when I was growing up, my life would be different. This is amazing. He is living his truth. He is telling kids out there, whether they're LGBTQ or they just feel bullied or marginalized, you're going to be okay. Guess what? You can have a number one hit. You'd be walking the red carpet like the photos you're showing. This is so consequential for young kids that you, you can't measure it. And like I said, as a gay man, to see a young talent like this, it's mind blowing and it just opens my heart. All right. Well, Mark, thank you for joining us this evening. We appreciate it. And of course, though, it's not all good news for Lil Nas X. As we told you last week, Nike filed suit over those promotional Satan shoes that he released for his song, but not for content, but for copyright violations. You saw that swoosh sign right there. And a ruling is forcing the company making the shoes to stop production.